Electronic Data Interchange is the concept of businesses electronically communicating information that was traditionally communicated on paper, such as purchase orders and invoices. Technical standards for EDI exist to facilitate parties transacting such instruments without having to make special arrangements. EDI has existed at least since the early 70s, and there are many EDI standards including X12, EDI FACT, ODET, etc., some of which address the needs of specific industries or regions. It also refers specifically to a family of standards. In 1996, the National Institute of Standards and Technology defined electronic data interchange as the computer-to-computer -computer interchange of strictly formatted messages that represent documents other than monetary instruments. ED implies a sequence of messages between two parties, either of whom may serve as originator or recipient. The formatted data representing the documents may be transmitted from originator to recipient via telecommunications or physically transported on electronic storage media. It distinguished mere electronic communication or data exchange, specifying that in ED, the usual processing of received messages is by computer only. Human intervention in the processing of a received message is typically intended only for error conditions, for quality review, and for special situations. For example, the transmission of binary or textual data is not ED as defined here unless the data are treated as one or more data elements of an ED message and are not normally intended for human interpretation as part of online data processing. In short, ED can be defined as the transfer of structured data, by agreed message standards, from one computer system to another without human intervention. History Like many other early information technologies, ED was inspired by developments in military logistics. The complexity of the 1948 Berlin Airlift required the development of concepts and methods to exchange, sometimes over a 300-board teletype modem, vast quantities of data and information about transported goods. These initial concepts later shaped the first TDCC Transportation Data Coordinating Committee standards in the U.S. Among the first integrated systems using ED were freight control systems. One such real-time system was the London Airport Cargo EDP Scheme LACES at Heathrow Airport, London, UK, in 1971. Implementing the Direct Trader Input DTI method, it allowed forwarding agents to enter information directly into the customs processing system, reducing the time for clearance. The increase of maritime traffic and problems at customs similar to those experienced at Heathrow Airport led to the implementation of DTI systems in individual ports or groups of ports in the 1980s. Topic. Standards ED provides a technical basis for automated commercial conversations between two entities, either internal or external. The term ED encompasses the entire electronic data interchange process, including the transmission, message flow, document format, and software used to interpret the documents. However, ED standards describe the rigorous format of electronic documents, and the ED standards were designed, initially in the automotive industry, to be independent of communication and software technologies. ED documents generally contain the same information that would normally be found in a paper document used for the same organizational function. For example, an ED940 ship from warehouse order is used by a manufacturer to tell a warehouse to ship product to a retailer. It typically has a ship to address, a bill to address, and a list of product numbers, usually a UPC, and quantities. Another example is the set of messages between sellers and buyers, such as request for quotation (RFQ), bid in response to RFQ, purchase order, purchase order acknowledgement, shipping notice, receiving advice, invoice, and payment advice. However, ED is not confined to just business data related to trade but encompasses all fields such as medicine e.g., patient records and laboratory results, transport e.g., container and modal information, engineering and construction, etc. In some cases, ED will be used to create a new business information flow that was not a paper flow before. This is the case in the Advanced Shipment Notification ASN, which was designed to inform the receiver of a shipment, the goods to be received and how the goods are packaged. Some major sets of ED standards The UN recommended UN, EDIFACT is the only international standard and is predominant outside of North America. The US standard ANSI ASC X12 is predominant in North America. GS1 ED set of standards developed the GS1 predominant in global supply chain. 
The TRADACOMS standard developed by the ANA article number association now known as GS1 UK is predominant in the UK retail industry. The ODET standard used within the European automotive industry. The VDA standard used within the European automotive industry mainly in Germany. HL7, a semantic interoperability standard used for healthcare data. Edigat S -E is a standard dealing with commerce, transport, via pipeline or container, and storage of gas. Many of these standards first appeared in the early to mid 1980s. The standards prescribe the formats, character sets, and data elements used in the exchange of business documents and forms. The complete X12 document list includes all major business documents, including purchase orders and invoices. The ED standard prescribes mandatory and optional information for a particular document and gives the rules for the structure of the document. The standards are like building codes. Just as two kitchens can be built to code, but look completely different, two ED documents can follow the same standard and contain different sets of information. For example, a food company may indicate a product's expiration date while a clothing manufacturer would choose to send color and size information. Topic. Transmission protocols ED can be transmitted using any methodology agreed to by the sender and recipient, but as more trading partners began using the Internet for transmission, standardized protocols have emerged. This includes a variety of technologies, including MISMODEM asynchronous and synchronous, FTP, SFTP and FTPS, Email HTTP AS1 AS2 AS4 OFTP and OFTP2 Mobile ED and more technologies when some people compared the synchronous protocol 2400 bit S modems, Clio devices, and value added networks used to transmit ED documents to transmitting via the Internet, they equated the non Internet technologies with ED and predicted erroneously that ED itself would be replaced along with the non Internet technologies. In most cases, these non Internet transmission methods are simply being replaced by Internet protocols, such as FTP, HTTP, Telnet, and email, but the ED documents themselves still remain. In 2002, the IETF published RFC 3335, offering a standardized, secure method of transferring ED data via email. On July 12, 2005, an IETF working group ratified RFC 4130 for MIME-based HTTP EDIINT transfers, and the IETF has prepared a similar RFC for FTP transfers AS3. ED via web services aka AS4 has also been standardized by the OASIS standards body. While some ED transmission has moved to these newer protocols, the providers of value-added networks remain active. Topic. Internet As more organizations connected to the Internet, eventually most or all ED was pushed onto it. Initially, this was through ad hoc conventions, such as unencrypted FTP of ASCII text files to a certain folder on a certain host, permitted only from certain IP addresses. However, the IETF has published several informational documents the applicability statements, see below under protocols describing ways to use standard Internet protocols for ED. As of 2002, Walmart have pushed the AS2 for ED. Because of its significant presence in the global supply chain, AS2 have become a commonly adopted approach for ED. Topic: Specifications. Organizations that send or receive documents between each other are referred to as trading partners in ED terminology. The trading partners agree on the specific information to be transmitted and how it should be used. This is done in human readable specifications, also called message implementation guidelines. While the standards are analogous to building codes, the specifications are analogous to blueprints. The specification may also be called a mapping, but the term mapping is typically reserved for specific machine readable instructions given to the translation software. Larger trading hubs have existing message implementation guidelines which mirror their business processes for processing ED and they are usually unwilling to modify their ED business practices to meet the needs of their trading partners. 
Often in a large company these ED guidelines will be written to be generic enough to be used by different branches or divisions and therefore will contain information not needed for a particular business document exchange. For other large companies, they may create separate ED guidelines for each branch, division. Topic. Transmission, direct ED and vans Trading partners are free to use any method for the transmission of documents as described above in the file transmissions protocols section. Further, they can either interact directly, or through an intermediary. Topic. Direct ED, peer-to-peer Trading partners can connect directly to each other. For example, an automotive manufacturer might maintain a modem pool that all of its hundreds of suppliers are required to dial into to perform ED. However, if a supplier does business with several manufacturers, it may need to acquire a different modem or VPN device, etc., and different software for each one. As ED and web technology have evolved, new ED software technologies have emerged to facilitate direct also known as point -to -point ED between trading partners. Modern ED software can facilitate exchanges using any number of different file transmission protocols and ED document standards, reducing costs and barriers to entry. <laughs> Value-added networks To address the limitations in peer-to-peer -peer adoption of ED, VANs value-added networks were established decades ago. A VAN acts as a regional post office. It receives transactions, examines the from and the to information, and routes the transaction to the final recipient. VANs may provide a number of additional services, e.g. retransmitting documents, providing third-party audit information, acting as a gateway for different transmission methods, and handling telecommunications support. Because of these and other services VANs provide, businesses frequently use a VAN even when both trading partners are using Internet-based protocols. Healthcare clearinghouses perform many of the same functions as a VAN, but have additional legal restrictions. VANs may be operated by various entities. Telecommunication companies Industry group consortia A large company interacting with its suppliers, vendors Managed services providers Topic. Costs, trade-offs and implementation It is important to note that there are key trade-offs between VANs and direct ED, and in many instances, organizations exchanging ED documents can in fact use both in concert, for different aspects of their ED implementations. For example, in the US, the majority of ED document exchanges use AS2, so a direct ED setup for AS2 may make sense for a US-based organization. But adding OFTP2 capabilities to communicate with a European partner may be difficult, so a van might make sense to handle those specific transactions, while direct ED is used for the AS2 transactions. In many ways, a van acts as a service provider, simplifying much of the setup for organizations looking to initiate ED. Due to the fact that many organizations first starting out with ED often do so to meet a customer or partner requirement and therefore lack in-house ED expertise, a van can be a valuable asset. However, vans may come with high costs. Vans typically charge a per-document or even per-line item transaction fee to process ED transactions as a service on behalf of their customers. This is the predominant reason why many organizations also implement an ED software solution or eventually migrate to one for some or all of their ED. On the other hand, implementing ED software can be a challenging process, depending on the complexity of the use case, technologies involved and availability of ED expertise. In addition, there are ongoing maintenance requirements and updates to consider. To help address these issues, many organizations with less robust IT teams, or no IT professionals, work with an ED systems integrator or managed services provider for ED implementation and maintenance. Topic. Interpreting data ED translation software provides the interface between internal systems and the ED format sent, received. For an inbound document, the ED solution will receive the file either via a value-added network or directly using protocols such as FTP or AS2, take the received ED file commonly referred to as an envelope 
and validate that the trading partner who is sending the file is a valid trading partner, that the structure of the file meets the ED standards, and that the individual fields of information conform to the agreed-upon standards. Typically, the translator will either create a file of either fixed length, variable length or XML tagged format or print the received ED document for non-integrated ED environments. The next step is to convert, transform the file that the translator creates into a format that can be imported into a company's back-end business systems, applications or ERP. This can be accomplished by using a custom program, an integrated proprietary mapper, or an integrated standards-based graphical mapper, using a standard data transformation language such as XSLT. The final step is to import the transformed file or database into the company's back-end system. For an outbound document, the process for integrated ED is to export a file or read a database from a company's information systems and transform the file to the appropriate format for the translator. The translation software will then validate the ED file sent to ensure that it meets the standard agreed upon by the trading partners, convert the file into ED format adding the appropriate identifiers and control structures and send the file to the trading partner using the appropriate communications protocol. Another critical component of any ED translation software is a complete audit of all the steps to move business documents between trading partners. The audit ensures that any transaction which in reality is a business document can be tracked to ensure that they are not lost. In case of a retailer sending a purchase order to a supplier, if the purchase order is lost, Anywhere in the business process, the effect is devastating to both businesses. To the supplier, they do not fulfill the order as they have not received it thereby losing business and damaging the business relationship with their retail client. For the retailer, they have a stock outage and the effect is lost sales, reduced customer service and ultimately lower profits. In ED terminology, inbound and outbound refer to the direction of transmission of an ED document in relation to a particular system, not the direction of merchandise, money or other things represented by the document. For example, an ED document that tells a warehouse to perform an outbound shipment is an inbound document in relation to the warehouse computer system. It is an outbound document in relation to the manufacturer or dealer that transmitted the document. Topic. Advantages over paper systems ED and other similar technologies save a company money by providing an alternative to, or replacing, information flows that require a great deal of human interaction and paper documents. Even when paper documents are maintained in parallel with ED exchange, e.g. printed shipping manifests, electronic exchange and the use of data from that exchange reduces the handling costs of sorting, distributing, organizing, and searching paper documents. ED and similar technologies allow a company to take advantage of the benefits of storing and manipulating data electronically without the cost of manual entry. Another advantage of ED is the opportunity to reduce or eliminate manual data entry errors, such as shipping and billing errors, because ED eliminates the need to re-key documents on the destination side. One very important advantage of ED over paper documents is the speed in which the trading partner receives and incorporates the information into their system greatly reduces cycle times. For this reason, ED can be an important component of just-in-time production systems, according to the 2008 Aberdeen report. A comparison of supplier enablement around the world. Only 34% of purchase orders are transmitted electronically in North America. In EMEA, 36% of orders are transmitted electronically and in APAC, 41% of orders are transmitted electronically. They also report that the average paper requisition to order costs a company $37.45 in North America, $42.90 in EMEA and $23.90 in APAC. With an ED requisition to order, costs are reduced to $23.83 in North America, $34.05 in EMEA and $14.78 in APAC. Barriers to implementation There are a few barriers to adopting electronic data interchange. One of the most significant barriers is the accompanying business process change. Existing business processes built around paper handling may not be suited for ED and would require changes to accommodate automated processing of business documents. For example, a business may receive the bulk of their goods by one or two day shipping and all of their invoices by mail. The existing process may therefore assume that goods are typically received before the invoice. 
With ED, the invoice will typically be sent when the goods ship and will therefore require a process that handles large numbers of invoices whose corresponding goods have not yet been received. Another significant barrier is the cost in time and money in the initial setup. The preliminary expenses and time that arise from the implementation, customization and training can be costly. It is important to select the correct level of integration to match the business requirement. For a business with relatively few transactions with ED based partners, it may make sense for businesses to implement inexpensive, rip and read solutions, where the ED format is printed out in human readable form, and people rather than computers respond to the transaction. Another alternative is outsource ED solutions provided by ED service bureaus. For other businesses, the implementation of an integrated ED solution may be necessary as increases in trading volumes brought on by ED force them to re-implement their order processing business processes. The key hindrance to a successful implementation of ED is the perception many businesses have of the nature of ED. Many view ED from the technical perspective that ED is a data format. It would be more accurate to take the business view that ED is a system for exchanging business documents with external entities, and integrating the data from those documents into the company's internal systems. Successful implementations of ED take into account the effect externally generated information will have on their internal systems and validate the business information received. For example, allowing a supplier to update a retailer's accounts payable system without appropriate checks and balances would put the company at significant risk. Businesses new to the implementation of ED must understand the underlying business process and apply proper judgment. Acknowledgement Below are common ED acknowledgement. Communication status – indicate the transmission completed MDN – message disposition notification in AS2 only – indicate the message is readable Functional acknowledgement – typically 997 – in ANSI, or CONTRL – in EDIFACT, which indicate the message content is verified against its template, and tell if the transaction is posted to the receiver's electronic system. Business level acknowledgement – the final indicator shows if the transaction is accepted by the receiver or not. See also Expense and cost recovery system ECRS. Extract, transform, load ETL. Legal electronic data exchange standard LEDES.